Well, America's wealthiest ski town just implemented a new city ordinance that might surprise you. The city of Aspen, Colorado, is asking its residents and businesses to turn off their outdoor and indoor lights if they shine past their property line by 10 p.m. or face a fine. The Aspen City Council unanimously passed this ordinance, marking the first change to the city's lighting regulations in more than 20 years. Lights must be turned off or at least not visible by your neighbors every night from 10 p.m. until 7 a.m. Businesses that are allowed to stay open after 10 must shutter all lights an hour after closing. The city council says this ordinance will positively impact wildlife and humans and experts saying chronic light exposure can actually cause numerous cancers as well as other health risks. So joining me now is the long range planner for the city of Aspen, Haley Hart. Uh, first of all, Haley, thank you so much for giving us some of your time to kind of talk about the cause and effect here. What led up to this ordinance even being put into place? Sure. Well, thanks for having me. And um, in general, the city of Aspen hadn't updated their lighting ordinance since 2003. So there have been significant changes to lighting technology, updated design trends, and as you had mentioned, just a better understanding of the value of the night sky. Um, and additionally, our previous code was fully prescriptive, meaning there was little consideration of the performance or the quality of light generated on the property. So we were treating all property types the same. So, you know, we had residential, commercial, our open spaces and parks with the same set of standards. So as a small rural resort town, we have different needs and uses for those spaces. So the goal is to create standards that were reflective of best practices. And we look to the International Dark Skies Association for those guidelines. You know, and, and Haley, you know, you just said it yourself. This is a small town. This is a resort town. Were any other solutions tried before implementing these new rules or kind of was this the way that the council decided it wanted to go? Yeah, so there have been um, a lot of resort communities and Mountain West communities that have followed these same guidelines. And again, the uh, International Dark Skies Association has this model ordinance. And so we were really looking to those guidelines and what has worked successfully in other Mountain West communities. You know, and so far, has there been any backlash? I mean, I imagine there has to be at least one person who, who's not happy with this. We had a pretty positive um, experience. We started with stakeholders. We had a visioning session. Um, so it really resulted in positivity throughout the community. But, you know, as always with city regulations, we have had eight complaints so far um, under the new codified regulations, five of which have been light trespass, so that light that's emanating beyond the property boundary, three of holiday lighting. Um, and that's pretty typical. So yeah. we're, we're seeing um, kind of the standard uh, you know, response to the updated code. Right, and I would say eight doesn't see, you know, I mean, it could, it could be eight, 80 or, you know, 800. Uh, Haley, I have to ask you, though, about crime. I'm imagining something like this happening in the city of Chicago uh, at night, and I just feel like it would be chaos. You know, it's been proven that, that lights help to reduce crime, help to re reduce crashes. Is there any concern about a potential uptick in crime? Um, most of our crime that we see has to do with the wildlife. Um, so we see a lot of bear intrusion into property, into trash. Um, so the updated code does respond effectively to ensuring that we can keep both bears and individuals safe. Um, you know, at the forefront of the updated code was responding to public safety and health. Um, and both, you know, wildlife, thinking also about snow and just ice. Um, those are the things that we mostly think about when um, responding to public safety. You know, and you mentioned the Colorado dark sky designation. You know, there are definitely potential benefits to nature with reduced artificial light. Kind of speak to that a bit uh, and that designation. Sure. So, you know, as the city of Aspen, we are in a uh, very uh, conservation and preservation focused area. And we do know that um, lighting, especially when it comes to artificial light, can disrupt aquatic ecosystems and biological systems. So we wanted to make sure that both the way that lighting is directed into these environmentally sensitive areas, as well as the temperature or quality of light um, was ensuring these decreased ecological impacts. And again, we, we know that there are studies out there. We look 
to those, our consultant um, looked to those when we looked at having those specific ranges. You know, and Haley, based on everything you know, the fact that there was research done uh, before this ordinance was put into place, do you think more and more places will attempt to, to maybe limit artificial lights at night? I do. I think that it is a growing understanding and a growing concern, especially in you know more of these remote rural areas. So we hope that our lighting ordinance might um, spark a vision for other communities to, to take action as well. All right, Haley, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.